So um, let's talk about search strategies. I have a couple of tiny quizzes here. I think maybe I'll, I'll ask one or two of these. So if instead of writing wellness and development, we end up writing wellness or yoga and development or commercialization or corporate wildcard, which uh, means corporate uh, corporation um, and so forth, which one is going to, or is it going to increase precision or sensitivity, right? So our, our search with all the ors, is that going to increase precision or sensitivity? What do you think? This is really the core of what we want to do with knowledge synthesis searching. It increases sensitivity because for each term, we're adding synonyms. And the reason why I include this example, it is our first example, we're going to skip through the other ones, is because this is the core of knowledge synthesis searching. You come up with as many synonyms as you can for every term, or as many relevant synonyms, of course, for every term, and then you combine the terms together. So remember those three chunks we looked at? You always think of the fullest way of expressing the first concept, the fullest way of expressing the second concept, and then you combine them in the end. Okay, so this brings us to another really important point that the Prisma uh, search extension is going to ask you about. How many and what kinds of disciplinary databases with Tesori versus citation indexes, or very often these are the interdisciplinary sources did you use? This is important to understand. First of all, we rarely think of the fact that we have those two uh, types of sources and they live right side by side. The disciplinary specialized databases are going to be the Medline the PubMed, the PsycInfo, whereas the interdisciplinary databases very often include the Web of Science and um, Scopus, which are citation indexes that allow us to search by citations and allow us to sort by the number of citations. And that's something that we can rarely do in the subject-specific databases. But the main reason why we want to search the subject-specific databases in knowledge synthesis projects is because they have the Zori of curated subject headings or thesaurus, right? subject headings that reflect the research terminology of the field that you're working in. So you're, you're using, you're tapping into the expert's own vocabulary. You're using their toolkit. And the key thing is to use those in parallel with regular keywords. Another word that you're going to find in the Prisma search extension is platform. Well, what is a platform? Here are examples of platforms. Platforms aggregate databases, and most of the databases end up being disciplinary databases, right? So EBSCO is a platform. Engineering Village or EI is a platform. Subject databases live inside the platform, right? Here is another set of platforms. Ovid, a fantastic platform for uh, searching most of our healthcare and databases that we have. ProQuest, a very powerful interdisciplinary platform for searching everything from education to sociology with psychology in between. So psychology is both on Ovid and on ProQuest. So this is a really important concept. And now when we look at under Ovid, pardon me, we see that it has databases with hugely significant thesauri that are subject specific. So we have MESH, the legendary medical subject headings that will MESH, that's what MESH stands for, M-E, medical, and then subject headings, thesaurus. This is the, the best uh, known and the oldest thesaurus. Embase has M3, MESH with synonyms, it's a specialized thesaurus. The M Psych Info has a fantastic, beautifully revised APA Psych Info thesaurus. It's great. They just revised it actually this summer and last year. So it's completely up to date and it's voluminous. I love the new Psych Info thesaurus. So, so helpful. So a number of other databases also have thesauri. Now, many of you may ask, and when you open up Ovid, you realize there is a profusion of medlines. And the usual reaction to this is, what is going on and which one of these am I going to use? Well, um, the only thing I'm going to say is be consistent. Whatever you use today, use that tomorrow. Make a note somewhere and keep that in your records. You really need to keep a record of that. What's the difference? Well, the first one is the kind of running medline that updates daily. The other ones are the stable medlines, right? So this is an important choice. If you're using the thesaurus heavily, you want to use one of the more stable medlines because it tends to have the updated subject headings. If you're using the daily updated um, medline, it will not have updated subject headings for all the newest um, in print newly added journal articles, right? So you have to keep that in mind. Is it 
good to mix the two, not so great. But once you've made a selection, you've decided I'm always using the stable medline from let's say last month or last week, that's fine. And just be consistent. Or you can always say, I'm just using the newest one because I combined thesaurus terms with keywords. That's fine. Because you see that in Ovid, there are many other databases. Guess what? Some of them have thesauri too. So APA, PsycInfo, beautiful thesaurus. And you can search as many databases on a platform as you want together. But remember, if you're searching the thesaurus, you can only search one database at a time. There are some advantages to staying on a platform and searching many databases in parallel. But remember, you can only do that with a keyword only search. And then you can go into each of the databases and do um, a thesaurus search, right? So there are many ways of making sure that you've searched them thoroughly. And remember, redundancy is completely fine because if you find duplicate or triplicate or quadruplicate uh, journal articles, your reference manager will eliminate them. So that's not a problem. It's much better to get more in a knowledge synthesis project than to get fewer. Okay, perfect. What we have here is a screen capture of what happens in one of these thesauri. The next few slides are going to try to map out most of your disciplines, I may have missed a few, but most of your disciplines into the proper databases with thesauri. Okay, so here I'm just showing a couple of examples of what uh, mesh looks uh, like. Okay, excellent. We're definitely going to examples than live. And one thing that I just want to show you, and this is a bit of a nerdy aside, but I still want to make that aside because once you understand this, it's going to be a lot easier to work with most uh, thesauri. So Every one of these thesauri gives you at some point a full tree view. So here I'm showing you the full tree view for internet addiction disorder in, not in PsycInfo because it would be a lot different and a lot bigger, but in Ovid Medline, okay? So what you get to see is that Medline covers a fair bit of psychology, covers some neuroscience, because again, it's a huge uh, medical specialized database. But look at this, look at the, the way this uh, tree of terms behaves. It is a taxonomy of medical terms. So it's a classification and it's based on uh, the properties of its members, right? But the properties that it actually looks at, which is so fantastic, is this ontological organization. So what it wants to show you is that there are some fundamental aspects of a reality that this mesh is trying to correspond to. And it's organized everything according to a hierarchy that tries to correspond to our understanding of the relationship of these terms in terms of what they do for people in real life, right? So addictive behavior underneath it has a number of behaviors like food addiction, exercise addiction, internet addiction. And then we see that compulsive behaviors have other types of behaviors like information seeking behaviors and so forth. Actually, you know, information seeking is out. So there are other compulsive behaviors and then there are impulsive behaviors. So what it tries to do, and you'll see this in every database that has a tree structure, it tries to at the very least have a taxonomy. And very often the taxonomy reveals uh, these deeper relationships, the kind of ontological kind of relationships between these terms. So it's really important to, to try to find out what are the relationships? What are the bases on which these terms are related? And then use it, right? And the reason why this is important is that the thesaurus will ask you whether to explode or not a term. Well, if you don't know what the daughter nodes are in, this, in the taxonomy, you don't know what the organization is, it's very difficult to explode because you know that if you explode the term, all the daughter, daughter nodes underneath that term are going to be included. Well, if they're not properly related, you don't want them in your search. So I always advise, take a look at the full tree, click on all the pluses, see the pluses right here on the left-hand side of each term to see what are the daughter terms, what is dependent on or what is subordinate to, to addictive behavior. And once you've studied that, you're good to go. You can decide to explode or not. Okay, so sorry for, for the nerdy aside. I just think it's, it's useful to know what you're looking, what you're working with. Okay, so let's move out back to the platform level. And now that we've looked a little bit at what the Ovid uh, platform thesauri look like, let's take a look at the ProQuest, ProQuest thesauri thesaurus too. 
the main ones are here, the ERIC and the APA Psych Info Thesaurus. So ERIC covers education. It's fantastic because ERIC is a database that has a lot of great literature. There are a lot of so-called ERIC reports that are very difficult to find in other ways. And with the ERIC Thesaurus, some of this great literature is whipped into shape, so it's a lot easier to find it. That's fantastic. That's great news. Uh, PsycInfo, again, has a great um, hierarchical thesaurus. That one's very, very much ontological. So there's, there's quite a lot of uh, psychological knowledge that's embedded in that thesaurus. Um, and there are other thesauri, and I'll show you in a moment, uh, that some of the thesauri serve more than one database. So there's some overlap between databases and thesauri. So ProQuest databases are right there, and these are the thesauri that are available within the databases. Like, why am I making this so uh, confusing? I want to show you that in some cases, a database corresponds to a thesaurus one-on-one, -on -one, and in some cases, they share. So ERIC has the ERIC thesaurus. PsycInfo has the APA thesaurus. RSC, Applied Science, uh, Social Science Index and Abstract, uh, has uh, the SEA thesaurus. Sociological abstracts have the sociological thesaurus. Now, worldwide political science abstracts and PACE both have the politics and policy thesaurus. LLBA, the linguistics and language behavior, have their own abstracts. The IBIS, International Bibliography of Social Sciences, has the very general ProQuest thesaurus. This one's a little bit less specialized, so we're starting to get into the slosh between the really specialized and the kind of general social science databases. Each of the major ProQuest databases, except for MLA, has a, a thesaurus. Now, why does MeSH not have an arrow? We do not have a Medline in ProQuest anymore. We used to have one. It was too clunky. Now, the only way to get to Medline is through Ovid. And we also have, of course, PubMed, the free version of that, but enriched by direct links to U of T resources also available. And PubMed is amazing. Uh, there's an example with PubMed in here that I want to show you in a few minutes. Okay, great. So what happens in the thesaurus? Uh, here's, uh, again, a bit of an explanation how a different uh, thesaurus looks like. This is the ProQuest thesaurus. Uh, we type in addiction, and um, these terms show up that you can then select. It's very similar to the Ovid thesaurus that we looked at. The, the organization is actually very, very similar. So what happens when subsubject databases are offered on multiple platforms? Hmm, good question. You have options. Um, if your topic is more uh, health and well-being focused, and you are mainly looking at, let's say, let's say longitudinal health effects, or if you're looking at mental health, you may wish to stay with Ovid because then you've got Medline and Base, and you can also use social work abstracts. However, if you're more interested in educational background or the educational dimensions of your study, but you're also using psychology, which is very common, educational psychology is a huge field, you may want to stay with ProQuest because you can use ERIC, PsycInfo, social abstracts, and anything else you need within that uh, territory. Does that make sense? Because once you get very comfortable using one set of thesauri and the organization of the thesauri on that platform, it's much easier to go between databases. And again, your search is more portable if you're doing a keyword search on several databases, and then you go back in and do thesaurus searches within individual databases. Um, so yeah, choose the platform that gives you the search, the best search building options, right? Now, how do you know what databases exist, right? I've covered a lot of them, but there are still others. You would use the subject A to Z guides, and we have a number of those. Well, we have we have basically all the disciplines I can think of that we serve in that list. So, for example, if we go to education, you'll see that the A to Z resources suggest education source and Eric. But ERIC is the one that allows for the most sensitive searches because it has a great searchable thesaurus. So I would say uh, very often you have to get into the database to try it out. But once you've tried it out, always look for the thesaurus. If the description doesn't tell you there's a thesaurus, always look for that first. Now, here's our engineering example that I was looking forward to. So to all of our uh, mechanical and industrial and biomedical engineers, biomedical engineers can actually very uh, helpfully use the medical databases, so Medline. But there is also Compendex. Compendex is a very good database. It's sensitive, and it has a very good searchable thesaurus of controlled vocabulary. I've used it repeatedly. It's fantastic. The best platform on the extreme right-hand side and subject databases 
with the Zori in between. So that should that should answer, I think, most of the questions. There are no links to databases there, but at least you know how to find them through resources A to Z. Um, 